Okay. We're talking about how Cezanne creates space using color elements. Obviously, each color element has its own spatial position. You can imagine, for example, if you could imagine a topographical space that looked like this. You would have, for example, a very light color, let's say white, would be on the first level. Obviously, this is picture space. This isn't real space. It's just, it just appears to be lighter or because it's coming out of the surface. Then you'd have the next color, maybe orange. Then you could take maybe magenta. And you could take any color you wanted, actually. And here in the back, you'd have blue. Or you could also use green. If it's a dark green, if you had a dark green, of course, if you have a light green, it might be right out here. It might be pretty light. A light green might even be farther out than a dark red. So it's not only about the warmth of the color. You can also have a warm, dark color receding. You can have a cold, light color coming out. So you can choose any color you want to represent any level of space that you want. This concept allows you to not use the object color, which any painter knows is a huge hindrance in the composition. Because if you're using object color, you've got, let's say you've got the face, any color, it doesn't have to be pink, it could be yellow, green, the hair is blue, it doesn't matter. But you've got this band of, of blue, you've got this blob of yellow or whatever it is, so you're having a lot of problems integrating these color blobs into an abstract composition. So if you're using Cezanne's method, you can basically use any color you want to at any position of the picture. Let's say you've got a head. Let's just say I'm doing a portrait. So anytime I need a part of the composition to see, I'm going to choose a color. I'm going to choose a color that is relatively further back. So let's say I, I want this color to recede. So I'm going to take an element and put it here. I'm going to take another element and put it here. Because now I've only got black and white, so I'm very limited. Take another element and put it here. Anywhere where I've got space that I need to delineate, I'm going to be using a color element that is darker than the color element that's in front of it. Because any line, you see in Cezanne's pictures, he said, I'm losing the contour. I'm losing the contour, I'm losing the line. Any line is actually two planes. It's the convergence of two planes. So you've got one plane here, and then you've got one plane coming out here. So this is actually, this plane is in front and this plane is in the back. So what you do is you delineate this plane, you delineate this jump in space. This is a relative jump in space from the front to the back. So this is how Cezanne managed to dissolve the line. So he's not using any outline whatsoever in his painting. He's only using these color elements and using them to delineate space or to create space. So this is actually a topographical type of space. This is a constructed space that is in steps. It's going in and it's going out. It's coming out of the surface. It's going back into the surface. And that's what we call Cezanne's color space. Cezanne's color 
space elements. Each element is has a relative spatial position relative to the element next to it. Okay? 